So, people are deworming themselves at home with supplements that they've bought in places like Amazon, and that is spreading like wildfire in places like TikTok. So we're gonna talk about it, and I'm gonna tell you why you don't need to do that. Now, I wanna be really clear here about my qualifications. I am not a doctor. I'm not even a licensed medical professional, but I am a scientist, and I'm just finishing up a master's in medical microbiology, which means I spent the last year learning how to understand the signs and symptoms of, to diagnose, to understand, and to treat bacterial, viral, parasitic, and fungal infections of all kinds, which did involve a lot of looking at poop and blood under the microscope, which was really cool. Also here at the top, I wanna to tell you that I don't think that Western medicine has all the answers. And in any situation where profit and health are linked, we always want to be asking questions about who profits from what. And I'm going to come back to that at the end. Now, we also have to understand that there are so many different kinds of parasites, not just worms. And they're all really cool, but they're really different. The worms are called the helminths, and that's stuff like hookworms, pinworms, roundworms, and we're gonna talk about those in more detail because those are the ones that people seem the most freaked out about. But there's also protozoa, microscopic teeny guys like Giardia and Entamoeba, and if these are pathogenic, as in if they're causing disease in you, they're usually gonna give you acute diarrhea, like you have a week of a not fun time, and then it goes away. There's actually no treatment for most of these. You just have to literally get it out of your system and make sure you're still getting enough water and food so you don't struggle with dehydration or malnutrition, especially in children. And most of these are transmitted via untreated water. So like drinking straight out of a creek would probably get you one of these bad boys or like it's pretty easy to get like crypt for example, at a children's pool because babies be pooping in the water. And I say, if these are pathogenic, because not all protozoa are bad for you. There's a bunch of these technically parasites that aren't pathogenic, meaning they don't make you sick. So like if I were to look at your poop, you personally, chances are you might have some of these critters swimming around in there. But if you don't actively have diarrhea, you don't have one that's doing anything bad in your body. They're just chilling. There are also a few kinds of protozoa that can be transmitted by insects, like flies or mosquitoes, and they cause diseases like leishmaniasis, trypanosomiasis, and malaria. They're carried by very specific species of insect depending on the disease, so if you don't live in or haven't visited a place where these insects live or are common, then you're not at high risk. And if you do get any of these diseases, you will know, because they make you pretty sick, pretty obviously. There are also a class of parasites called ectoparasites, and that just means that they live outside your body, like on your body instead of inside your body. Most of them are arthropods and they're organisms like ticks and fleas and lice. So we're just gonna breeze right on past those because we want to get to the worms, the big sexy baddies that everyone is freaked out about. Now, there are two main ways that worms are transmitted, transdermally and fecal oral root, which is about as tasty as it sounds. Transdermally just means they get into your body through your skin. So the worm eggs or larvae are in the dirt. You walk on the dirt in your bare feet and the parasite enters your body through your skin. It starts to grow and replicate, makes its way to your gut, and then you poop out the eggs or the larva. And the larva out in the environment can then go on to infect someone else in the same way. This is pretty much the same for the fecal oral route. Someone poops out some parasite eggs and they make their way out into the soil or the water and people either come into contact with that soil and water directly and ingest it orally or that soil and water is used to grow food that maybe isn't that well washed and somebody then eats. See, fecal, oral. Now, keep in mind, both of these scenarios require that parasite-filled poop makes its way into soil or a water supply. And in areas with poor waste management, this is a really big problem. But in places where we don't get as much sewage contamination of water and soil, parasite infections that are transmitted these ways are less common. One exception to this is parasites that also have an animal reservoir. That's another animal, like a livestock animal or a domestic animal that also carries this parasite for part of the parasite's life cycle. And then that animal poops it out, at which point the parasite can infect humans. We're not as good at carefully disposing of animal waste as we are about human waste. So this is a big way that parasites can be transmitted, even in places with good human waste management. Kids are actually especially good at getting these because they like to eat dirt and they're not great at washing their hands. <laughs> but even if you are infected with one of these, like toxocariasis, for example, 
In most cases, your immune system will actually take care of it and the parasite will die and your body will get rid of it. But if a worm like this did continue surviving and make itself at home in your body, you'd know. You would get pretty sick and it would be pretty hard to ignore and those symptoms are something that you'd usually go to a doctor about to see what was going on. The other kind of intestinal worm that I know people are worried about are the ones you can get from eating meat. These are worms that live in animals that are slaughtered for food, like cows, pigs, and some fish. And if the meat isn't processed or cooked correctly, you can ingest a form of the worm called a cyst that can transmit the worm to you. The most common kind of worm infection that's transmitted in this way are different species of tapeworm. And again, these are pretty uncommon in places where food provision, like the processing of animal carcasses for meat, is highly regulated. Like food health and hygiene agencies are looking for stuff like this infection meat, etc., and eliminating it from the food processing chain as that meat goes along. Now, there is an intestinal worm infection that is very common in countries with highly developed hygiene infrastructures. It's the most common worm infection in the UK and the US and other places, and if you're a parent, you will probably shudder when I say its name. It's the pinworm, which is also called threadworm. And it's a pretty unpleasant infection that's very common in young children, but it's very easily treatable. And if you have these worms, you will know. First of all, unlike a lot of other worms, the adult form does actually come all the way down to the anus. With a lot of other worms, you're just shedding a larva or an egg, but with threadworms, you see the adults. So you'll see them, but also they are incredibly itchy. Like they will make your butthole itch. They make the anus feel like you would rather not have an anus than have an anus with a threadworm infection. But because they're so common and so easy to treat, many countries do have over-the-counter medication that you can take to get rid of them. Although you do want to educate yourself about how to cleanse your environment because the eggs like to stick around in things like bedding and curtains and play areas. So it's easy to get a reinfection. Once again, if you don't have any symptoms, especially these hallmark symptoms of this particular worm infection, then you don't have this parasite. Sensing a theme? With all of this said, there are a few worm infections, roundworms like Ascaris species, for example, where if you have them, you may not experience any symptoms. But if they do start to cause a problem, you will feel abdominal discomfort and it may progress to other more severe issues. So my main question to you is, if you're not sick, why do you want treatment? Is it because the idea of having worms inside you freaks you out? Because that's totally understandable. But here's why it might not actually be a problem. A ton of really interesting recent research has actually shown that a minor parasite burden that isn't making you sick or causing you to not get the proper nutrition you need might actually be good for you. See, the kind of immune cell that responds to parasites is the same kind of cell that's involved in a lot of autoimmune conditions. It's like if your eosinophils, for example, aren't being kept busy clearing out harmless parasites, they're gonna be looking for something to do. And that something to do just might be attacking your own body. So keeping those parasites around may not actually be too bad an idea. I'll let you chew on that for a minute, but here is the main gist of this whole video, and it's why buying something to deworm yourself at home isn't a good idea. And I just have to pause here and say that this is actually why I'm not bringing up any stats about how common worm infection is, because the truth is, the data isn't great. Especially in countries like the US, we don't have really up-to-date, thorough information about what percentage of our population carries a worm. And while I do think it is really important that we get more better data about the incidence of worm infection in US populations, especially so we can identify communities that may need better infrastructure, the three reasons that I'm about to share with you, I hope will put your mind at ease about why that, the stats, the incidence rate, isn't actually that important when we're talking about deworming at home. Reason number one. Lots of these herbal medicines that you can order online contain ingredients that A, haven't been rigorously studied, so we don't know if they're effective, and B, may actually be toxic. Wormwood is a main ingredient in this product, for example, and wormwood is actually a poison. If you take enough of it, it will make you really sick or could even kill you. 
especially if you're administering stuff like this at home to children who typically need much smaller doses of all medications in general, you could be doing some serious damage to their liver or their kidneys. And also let's keep in mind that the supplement industry isn't regulated. Like literally anyone can put anything in a bottle like this and say whatever they want about it on the label. There's literally no requirement for them to tell the truth about it. Or something else I've seen is that people have bought like veterinary anti-parasitic medication that's meant for like horses or dogs. And the reason that you can't take those is because they're formulated in a different way because those animals have different digestive systems. Most of those anti-parasitic medications are taken orally. So they're formulated differently, uh, they're dosed differently, right? A horse is a hell of a lot bigger than a human being and they may work in a different way. And in a human could make you really, really sick. So please do not take anti-parasitic medication that isn't made for humans. Now, reason number two, if you are sick and you do have a parasite infection, a doctor will often need to do something kind of specialized, like maybe some imaging to make sure they know where the parasite is and make sure they get the whole thing out. Or maybe they'll need to monitor you as you're eliminating the parasite from your body to make sure that you're doing okay. There's a disease called sister cirrhosis, for example, that's caused by a kind of tapeworm that is really serious. And point number one here is that no homeopathic medicine that we know of is gonna get rid of a really serious serious worm infection like this, but even if you do try to do something at home with something, as we've discussed, that is unregulated and potentially toxic, if the worms have made their way into your important organs, trying to kill them all at once will send your body into shock and may even be lethal. A serious worm infection like this has to be treated in a very specific way to kill the worm or worms slowly and monitor your body's reaction as that medication is doing its work so that you don't do any further damage to your body. Also, all of the different worms that I mentioned today are different. They have different life cycles, they have different presentations in your body, and they look different under the microscope and may require different treatment, which is why diagnosing the correct organism to get the correct treatment is so important, and that's something that you can't do at home. All of this is why I say that if you suspect a parasite infection in yourself, you need to seek medical help. Not because I'm saying you don't know your own body, but because you don't know how to clear a serious infection safely, or to monitor to make sure that the parasite is all gone. And lastly, once again, with feeling, any parasite infection, if the parasite is causing you a problem, you will probably know, you will be sick. Something that a lot of people responded with when I originally posted about this kind of off the cuff on TikTok was that I've been brainwashed by my education and I'm trying to peddle Western medicine and push it down people's throats and Western medicine is evil and just in it for the profit. And to that I say, I personally do not think Western medicine has the cure to all your ills. And I think there are a lot of things wrong with our healthcare system. And I think a lot of holistic treatments have great legs to stand on. But I just also know that scientific study of these organisms and the diseases they cause is currently the best way we have to understand, diagnose, and treat them. And that especially goes for the treatments that have been extensively studied. We know what they do in your body, how they get rid of the parasite, how effective they are, and how we can help them do the least damage to your body. And most of these still have to be prescribed by a doctor. And if we're worried about people profiting off of something, then the thing I'm worried about is supplement companies taking advantage of people's hysteria about something like this and selling you a product that at best is gonna be a waste of money and at worst could make you really sick. So if you're big on questioning the relationship between health and profit, then I'd ask you to question why, if you're not sick, is someone trying to convince you that you are and that you need to buy a product to fix it? Even if you do have parasites living in your body, if they're not making you sick, they're not a problem. We have trillions of microorganisms, bacteria, viruses, fungi, parasites, and more that live in and on our bodies. They're called our microbiome and they are a part of us. And they do a lot of hard work to defend us from invading diseases and keep our immune systems functioning properly. So if you're not sick, you're not sick. And if you are sick, you're gonna need a professional diagnosis by someone who has studied what these organisms are, knows the correct specific treatment for what you have, and is gonna apply that treatment safely. I know that saying 
go to the doctor is an incredibly privileged thing to say because healthcare isn't always easy to access and in places like the US, it's not free. But at the very least, I hope I've convinced you that you don't need to buy something off of Amazon for a problem you probably don't have. I just want you to be safe. Anyway, I hope this helped you feel a little less freaked out if you were freaked out by this trend. And if you want more on this topic or if you have follow-up questions, then subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram and TikTok because I'll be talking about it more. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.